is six ways to increase your cash flow on an existing investment property. Number one is learn how to increase your rents on your property by fully understanding what your property is actually worth by understanding how to do an evaluation on your rental appraisals yourself. I'm probably gonna get a little bit of hate for this, but ethically you are doing a disjustice to your tenants, aka your customers, if you don't charge them the highest amount that you can in that area. Not saying to overcharge, just charge the highest bracket. Because it is your duty as an investor to provide a high quality service in return. What I mean by that is fixing stuff when they break, fix them straight away without second guessing. So for me, my tenants feel so confident and they feel secure in knowing that if something breaks throughout the house, I don't second guess it, I fix it straight away. So I'm providing a high quality service. It's the same as what we're taught in business. Don't compete on price, compete on customer service. So because I'm charging the most amount, that means, guess what? My properties aren't negative geared, which means that I can fix things when they break straight away. But unfortunately in Australia, property managers work for more or less the tenants in the door rather than you, the landlord. So it means they typically underquote what you could actually be getting. So you need to understand how to evaluate your rent yourself. I've created another video on how to do this. Either scroll through my profile or comment below rental yield and I'll get my team to send you the link. Number two is buy cheaper properties. So rather than buying properties around 800,000 to a million dollars, there are a lot of good quality properties in Australia still in 2024 for $300,000, $400,000. Buying cheaper properties allows you to own more doors, which allows again, more risk mitigation and diversifying your property portfolio. So it mitigates vacancies. It also increases the velocity of how many times you can increase your rents by because you have more doors, aka more customers, aka more income streams. Number three is you can get a tax variation for any existing properties that you own inside your personal name. A tax variation is what you do with your accountant or essentially they can forecast your future depreciation or money back that you would get at tax time. And you're essentially saying, hey, ATO, rather than give me that big tax return back once per year, I want you to divide that and give that to me over the months, over the year. It's a really cool hack to getting through different storms at the moment with interest rates rising. That could actually literally be the thing that helps somebody keep a property as well. Number four is don't do negative gearing. So look for more higher rental yields. So people think this isn't possible in Australia. It absolutely is. My team do it every single day. And usually on a national average, rents usually take about 12 to 18 months to catch up with interest rates. So guess what? Rental yields across Australia are nationally starting to catch up with the huge peak of interest rate rises that we had back in 2022, 2023. So finding cash flow positive properties are about to come a lot more easier again. Oh, number five is formalize your LVRs going up with your bank. So every six months, you should be getting a minimum of three bank evaluations. When you get that bank evaluation, tell your bank, hey, Mr. Bank, look, my property's gone up, which means my LVR's gone down, which now I want you to see if you can give me a better interest rate, please. Because usually when you're in the top 30 to 40 brackets of LVR, so between 90, 90% LVRs, 80s and 70s, when the lower you go, the lower the interest rate banks typically would give you. But once you're under like 60% LVRs, the interest rates don't typically change that much. So it's usually when you're more highly leveraged. And a lower interest rate means more cash flow in your pocket. That brings me to point number six, which is ask your bank for a new interest rate every six months at minimum. It requires basically no work. It's just one email you send to your bank. And you can call the bluff a little bit on your bank as well. Just be like, hey bank, this other bank's giving me a better loan of blah. Can you please try and match this so I stay with you? Sure, Olivia, no worries, we'll match it. And number seven, which is a last resort for me, but doing a small cosmetic renovation on a property. Now, you need to make sure that you're doing the right renovation and you're not blowing money on it. So you need to make sure that you're doing the right renovation that will increase the rental income on that property. So the best way to work this out is go to a bunch of real estate agents in the area, get three of them minimum to tell you, you ask them specifically, you're asking them, what value would I need to add to this property in order to increase my rent from say 400 bucks to 500 bucks a week? Be specific. 
and get all of them to give you specific things to do inside that house. For example, it might be adding in a new splitty, adding in a dishwasher, putting in a brand new kitchen. Just It might actually just be repaint and recarpet the whole house. Fixtures, fittings, light bulbs, that sort of stuff. Curtains are a big one too. But don't overdo it and don't get emotional. If you want more tips like this, click the link in my bio and sign up for my newsletter where I send out a lot more of this sort of stuff.